What's good everyone, my name is Zayas and today I'm here to review Ultra Heaven by Koike Keachi. This guy was a pretty big deal back in the day, making short series, a collection of short stories, and winning a Tezuka award. A lot of his series pushed the boundary on what you can even consider to be manga. He has series like Spinoza and Asteroid where there's very little text and the story is primarily told through images. And he has those as well as he has other series like G and Heaven's Door where he does tell stories but these stories are told in a really unconventional manner where they're just jumping back and forth and things are just getting super out of control. It's also important to note that this series is on hiatus and has been on hiatus for a very long time and that's perfectly fine with me because the real point to this series isn't really to convey a story and whatever it needed to get across, I think the series has already done that. It's also very important to note that drugs are a very big part of almost every series that he's written, from this death grass in these random short stories, to writing an entire series about a samurai getting high, all the way to Ultra Heaven. Ultra Heaven adheres to a more traditional manga format than he had ever really done before, but at the same time, the imagery is somehow more chaotic, more trippy, and more mesmerizing than it had ever been. The artwork seems a little bit crisper and a little cleaner than his other works, which really allows for this mind-bending, intoxicating artwork to really whisk you away. Reading this series makes me feel high, and I've never been high. Even though this is more traditional than his other series, he's still breaking conventions left and right, Things will just break down and pages will start swirling into each other one after the other as these characters go on these insane trips. And it's easy to point to one of these crazy spreads which just looks absolutely incredible and nothing like you'll ever find in any other manga and be like, this is awesome. But there's also other things like the crazy attention to detail just in random everyday living spaces. Just everywhere in the series, the artwork is gorgeous. If I were to judge this solely on artwork, this is perfect, there's no real improvements to be made here, and I don't see any other author being able to do this. But there's more to artwork to a manga. If you were to compare this to any of his other works, there's a lot more effort being put in to make a good story and good characters, but at the end of the day, it's basically just passable. Everything is left super vague and super abstract, and you're not really given a ton to work with. If you really start reaching and grabbing all these random things, you can probably pull some sort of meaning together. People will talk about how he's talking about how powerful the imagination is, or like how these random Buddhist symbols and these random references to obscure anime are some sort of meaning behind the series. But personally, I believe there's no real meaning there. There's also ideas of like why people do drugs and why other people consider drugs to be a bad thing. But all of these ideas to me just feel very like thrown in. There's no real central themes and there's no real further explanation behind any of them. At the end of the day, the story feels kind of black and white. Like there's these mysterious men probably representing something like government officials or just people in power. And they find this addict who wants to commit suicide and they're just taking advantage of him and testing their drug on him. So it just feels to me like the author was going for like a good versus bad type thing. I also kind of saw that in like the bald monks or whatever, the people who are doing all the amps. Like these guys are super strict, they want order, they want all this stuff and these other guys are reckless and they're fighting against them and they have to bring them down because they're the bad guys, and we're the good guys. I did like how he was in the chair and it keeps flashing to him in the chair and it's just hinting that he's in a coma and this is all just some sort of memory and there were parts of the stories I thought were decent. And the story does do a good job of managing to get us to these crazy trippy moments without making it seem weird like some of his previous works did. But at the end of the day, the story is just good enough. It's nothing spectacular. You're not going to read this series for the story. Characters too, I feel like Kabu is the only character which gets expanded on beyond really face value. There's the whole thing with him having suicidal tendencies and him having memories of his mom who OD'd when he was very young, which may have resulted in him trying to find the same high that his mom was seeking. But again, there's not that many character moments, and when they do happen, they're kept vague and they're kept short. So I wouldn't really say characters are a big sticking point of this series. To me, the artwork alone is enough to love this series, but in terms of 
a full-fledged story, which I think manga should be, it's lacking a little bit here and there. I'm feeling like a light eight. Thank you everyone for watching, like and subscribe, and if you have any feedback, I was wondering next month I was thinking of doing a bunch of top tens and bottom tens, and I was thinking of doing a top ten and bottom ten of an ongoing series, which only considers chapters which happened this year, and a top ten and ongoing completed series, which considers all the series which completed this year. So if you'd like to see that, let me know. If you have any other ideas, you can let me know too. Or just anything about manga in general, if you want to put it down there. And thank you.